and you can see it's not enough because right away my vertical uh, my uh, my velocity starts dropping as soon as I take out the main engine so so we have to get a little bit faster before we can do that let's just take a look outside Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and this is going to be the beginning of a new series I'm putting together where we're going to be going from Earth oh, out to Vesta, and as you can see in the little preview window up there, you know we're not at KSC, and there's a reason for that. So let's just go ahead and jump into things and get going. So we'll be taking the XR5 out to uh, Vesta, and the reason I'm choosing Vesta is because I've done a couple of Earth to Mars missions as of late, and I've and depending on what order these get uploaded, I've also done some um, some missions in and around Mars, dealing with the moons of Mars. So I just kind of wanted to pick a different target this time. And the reason I'm taking the XR5 is because I don't know off the top of my head without you know getting into a bunch of fuel planning, which I'm not quite ready for that yet as of the date of this recording, which is uh, July 21st, uh, 2021. I'm not quite to the point where I want to get into a bunch of complex fuel planning. So I I'm hoping that I can just fill up the XR5 with uh, a lot of main fuel, and that will be enough for the trip. Now, as far as getting to Vesta, I don't think that's a problem for any of the vessels uh, for the XR2. The problem I can foresee is that uh, when you get to Vesta, it's a really small body, um, probably a few times bigger than like Phobos and Deimos. It is large enough that you can actually orbit around it, but it's just a really bumpy, uh, a really bumpy area to be at. <clears throat> and uh, there's no atmosphere there, so the only way to slow down is, you know, the same way that you would slow down like around Earth's moon, which is to go retrograde and use, um, use some engines of some sort to slow down. And and I don't know if the XR2 would have enough fuel to take off from the runway, you know, without using a vertical launcher and without, you know, stopping at the ISS and refueling or something. So I don't know if the XR2 could make the trip. So that's why I'm taking the XR5. And I'm not at KSC because I have found that, uh, and depending on which videos I decide to upload and which order they get uploaded in, you may have seen how much trouble I had taking the XR5 off from the runway at KSC. It's basically just too short. And uh, you can do it though. I was talking to Dimitri and he told me that if you use the hover engines to help offset some of the the mass, some offset some of the weight of the XR5, you know, you can you can successfully lift off from KSC. But I chose White Sands because this runway is really long. It's like 11,000 meters, I want to say something like that it's quite long actually we can check so if I go to control I and go to base and no I don't want base yeah no I do want base and I go to white sands so we're on runway 35 it looks like or well it looks like 35 to me but whatever that number is but yeah you can see the runways here are you know about 11 kilometers long so we have a lot of room for takeoff here now I will say that in Orbiter 2016, uh, White Sands by default is worthless. I don't even know why it's included because you can't use it. The runway is so bumpy that you can't take off. But uh, I was talking to Dimitri about this. He created this flat file, which you have to have the D3, D9 client for. But what the flat file does is it basically just flattens out the this this part of Orbiter so that as we're going down the the runway here we're not going to be bouncing all over the place all right so uh, let's jump inside and get planning now I am planning to use IMFD as much as possible for this mission but I typically find transex is easier to use for finding the initial dates now I'm not going to be using transex uh, for I don't think I'm going to be using transex for anything other than just finding the date so I'm going to select Escape, I'm going to go Forward, and select Vesta, 
and I'm going to bring up Transex on this side and go forward out to the uh, stage 3 so I can view the encounter. And then we're going to go into our eject plan, and we need to raise one side of our orbit, so I'm going to put in a lot of prograde until we are out around the orbit of Vesta. So this is a uh, so this would be the Sun, this would be the orbit of Earth around the Sun, and this would be the orbit of Vesta around the Sun. So we need to go way out. And Vesta is somewhere between somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. So it's further than Mars, but closer than Jupiter. And it's a really small target. Alright, so now we just need now that we've got our prograde put in, we need to find a date we can use to go out to Vesta. So currently uh, we would arrive here while Vesta's over there, so we're, you know, on the opposite sides of the sun, basically. So let's put in lots of time. And until we can have a, a time where things are coming together. And that still looks like it's way off. And then that's way off. And ideally, you know, like I usually say too, I'd like to arrive preferably near the white line. It's not absolutely necessary because you can see here we're starting to get a bit of a convergence. So if we were to, you know, take out some prograde, put in some plane change, then we could probably make that work. But I do find that I like it a little better if I can time it so that we arrive, you know, when we're at one of these nodes. So I don't know if that's going to work. I don't think so. But let's see what happens if I take out some prograde here. Now, as I take out prograde, we're getting farther and farther apart, so I can pretty well tell that's not going to work. So let's keep going forward. And maybe on the next time around, maybe here. So that's a bit closer. Let's take out some prograde, see what happens. Went the wrong way on that. And that's tightening up, uh, tightening things up a little bit. So let's see, do we need to be sooner? Yeah, a bit sooner. So yeah, we might be able to make this work. That's two gigameters, about two million kilometers. So, or billion. All right, let's take out some more. So it doesn't, well, all right, let me just go back and forth between prograde and date for a moment just to see if we can make these come together. It looks like we can, so so yeah, we'll probably fly on this date. Alright, let's uh, so well, things are getting a bit tricky here. We might okay, let me see what happens with the date. So adding in a bit of date is helping, so I'm going to take the closest approach down as low as it will go and then I'm intentionally going to overshoot as we often do with these types of things. I'm going to stop there, go back to prograde and do the same thing. So go down to my lowest point and then overshoot in the other direction for a bit and then back to date and do the same thing. I need to go the other way on the date. Nope. Mm. Things are getting really stubborn right here at 540M. So that means I need probably one of my other variables, or I need a different date. But let's see what we can find here for our lowest. So we're down to about 250 right there, so let me go ahead and play with the date again. So maybe I just went the wrong way with the date. So let's, let's not worry about overshooting so much at the moment. Yeah, I think I think we'll make it work. Okay, and again, I'm not using Transex to to get my final solution. So I just want to get in the in the I just want to get a date selected, and it looks like I found a date. So here I'm looking at the minimum altitude on that side, and here we're really close. So this date will work. So now I'm going to bring up Interplanetary MFD and go into the menu, go into the configuration turn off nodal regression because I still have not enabled non-spherical gravity sources at this time and I'm going to go into the course program and I want target intercept and I'm going to target Vesta 
and now using these dates that I found in Transex, I'm going to come over here to the MJD for the uh, the eject and put in that date. So set 60700.5397 enter and this will be our encounter date which is given over here 60989.38827 now for the most part I'm done with Transex. I may use Transex for other things like the closest approach because we don't always get that information in interplanetary MFD but I might be able to just use the map program to get that information but that was really all I wanted to do with Transex because I find it much faster to do it that way than messing with target intercept lock unlock and all that all right so now we're in the ballpark um, with our date so before I mess around with this anymore um, and since we're so far off the date because the date here July 19th 2021 that's the day I'm recording the video so I need to go into the scenario editor and put in a date that's closer to this number which is going to be six zero six nine nine dot five and we'll apply that date done close all right so now we're now we've told uh, orbiter you know to jump forward to the date uh, one day before we're we think we're gonna fly so now I'm going to adjust my my encounter and my eject by little bits at a time to see if I uh, to see to you know try to get my delta V down to a low number so let's do that let's go to a hundred on that adjustment so is that helping hurting not making a difference it's helping a little bit so that's pretty slow right now so let me actually go to the MJD and maybe do uh, let me start with the one X Still seems a bit slow. Let's do 10. All right, now we're making some differences. Okay, so I saw 14. And on MJD, let me go to 1 and just see what happens if I add in. Is that going to help, hurt, not make a difference? It's not really helping. So let me go backwards. And that's not helping. So, so I think we've pretty well found the overall lowest delta V we're going to get. Uh, based on the fact that, you know, we can see <clears throat> that this is not a good Haman transfer. So we, we are spending more delta V on one or both sides than we would have to if we found a better launch window. But we'll go ahead and take this launch window. Let me just check here again. That's not helping. And that's not helping. Okay, so I feel like we have found the lowest values that we're going to get. Again, there's a couple other things we could probably do. Let me just check this really quick. If I lock these together and let's see if I make a change, you know, on both of them at the same time, is that going to help at all or not make a difference? So that's not helping. What if I go backwards? Okay, not helping. All right, I feel pretty confident then that this is basically the lowest solution we're going to get without, you know, checking lots and lots of orbits. Okay, so how much time is this going to take? So if we round this to 6,100, so six, uh, or 61,000 rather, because you can see this is just four days shy of 61,000. So 61,000 minus... 60,700 is 300. So we need 300 days of oxygen. All right, so let's uh let's uh and okay, let's do let's do one thing at a time. So let's get our oxygen. So we're going to go into the payload editor and I am not going to open the doors this time. Can you guess why? We're just going to edit the payload directly. So let's go down to the bottom panel. So we have 14 days currently. If I put in one module, I have 314. Technically that's enough, but I feel like it's cutting it a bit close. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in two. So that gives us way more than we need. I could potentially drain off 
some of that because I think I think like 350 days would be would be good. But you know what? We'll just go ahead and take both. Maybe part of the mission includes taking some extra oxygen to the Vesta base with us and dropping it off. All right, now main fuel. So we saw in IMFD that we need about 11,000 delta V for for our our eject and then our uh, essentially like our velocity match when we get to Vesta. And I know that we're going to need something like nine or ten thousand just to take off and get into low earth orbit so what I'm going to do I'm just gonna fill the vessel so all the area that we had left is now main fuel so that's four eight twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, so 27. 20, 29, 30. So 30, I believe, if I'm doing that right, so 30 modules of main fuel. And each module has 13,000 kg of delta V in it. And the combined weight is 17,000 but when you add in the mass of the container, but the mass of the container is just dead weight. So we're adding 30 times 13,000 worth of uh, Delta V. So don't know if that's going to be enough, but uh, hopefully it will be. All right. Now, now the next thing we need to do is find out when when can we have a 90 degree heading or, or as close to a 90 degree heading as we can have so i'm going to bring up interplanetary on this side and i'm going to tell interplanetary mfd that i want the left side to get the information from the right side and the way i can do that is by pressing the pg button and you can see this side has an id of zero this side has an id of one so if i want this side to get information from that side i type in one hit enter and now I can go to the surface launch program and it's already connected to the course program so it already has the data that it needs because it's connected to this program I'm going to say I want an initial altitude of 200 kilometers so 200 K and now according to interplanetary MFD if I leave in 31,000, you know, basically 32,000 seconds, I will have a 90 degree heading. So let me just think, am I forgetting anything? No, I think that's correct. All right, so we're, we're pretty much ready to fly, but we are coming up pretty close to 20 minutes on this video so let me go ahead and switch camera views here and I'll save the ride to orbit for the next part the XR5 is heavy and takes a while to get up into orbit so uh, hopefully we'll get the whole ride done in the next video but that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this part if you like the video hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video